right, everyone. This is what you've been waiting for, a follow-up on the ugly Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. With the assistance of these three thieves in this bottle, I was able to replace those missing components that I showed you in part one. So we have our choke, got a new filter cap assembly, modulation resistor, and I had to do quite a bit of wire touch-up. Somebody had been in here conducting a science experiment. There was all kinds of wires cut, there was all kinds of added shielded cabling, all kinds of cool stuff. So I put it back to stock. So in this video, we're gonna fire it up for the first time and see if we get output and hopefully get some modulation. But first, let me give you a quick guided tour of the underside and the top side, show you where we're at, and then test time. Okay, bottom side tour will start up here in the crystal and buffer area. There was a lot of modifications here. There was many caps, some shielded cable, terminal boards, you name it. I removed all that and luckily the original wire harness was able to drop back on to the terminal board and I restored that to stock. Now if we come over here, this is the AC input section. You remember these three coils were missing and of course the AC cord is gone, but I found one of these assemblies with the crystal socket, which is very cool, in my junk box, and there she is installed. Now if we come down here, I added new filter caps, because as you know, I never fire up these Vikings without fresh filter caps. We have our low voltage power supply and our negative power supply filter caps installed. Over here, we've got the new Ohmite modulation resistor. Okay, so he's all wired in. I had to do some more wiring on the CW phone switch. A lot of these were disconnected for some odd reason. If we cruise on down here, trying to operate my camera at the same time, guys, there is the new D-Lab high voltage filter board. It consists of two 47 microfarad F&T caps, some balancing resistors, and that replaces the big old oil tin leaker box, okay? It's gone. Look at all the additional room we have here. I have not touched the audio section yet. So at this point, I believe the transmitter is safe to fire up. I have not even cleaned it yet, but I just want to see what she'll do before I go any further. All right, top side, she's still kind of dusty and crusty. I'll get to that once I verify this thing is worth saving. I still do not know if it powers up properly and we have high voltage. I replaced one of the five R4 rectifiers. I put in a new 5B4. I found that this tube here should be a 6AU6 was actually a 6BA6. And one of the little audio preamp tubes down here, real easy to get to, was actually popped out of the socket. It was just kind of floating there, right? So that's a good catch, otherwise there'd be absolutely no chance of modulation. All right, let's fire up the ugly Viking 2. I've got the Viking 2 fired up. I have not applied high voltage yet, but I just want to do that quick check on the audio section. So I have a D104 hooked up to the input. Got a scope looking at one of the 100 ohm resistors feeding the grids of 807. So let's watch our scope here. Okay, so there's all the way down. Now there, seems like I have some amplitude, but the more I advance the pot, she goes down. So there may be an issue. Look there. Yeah, there's something going on with that pot, but it's good enough to check the transmitter when we key it up. All right, so as you saw from my little audio snippet where I just verified the preamp section, the audio is probably going to be weak, okay? But there should be something that we can observe on the meter. So at this point, I've got the Viking 2 warming up. We're on the 40 meter band, and we're going to test it into my Palstar dummy load. So now I will focus on the transmitter and the dummy load so you can see it as I see it. Wish me luck. Ugly Viking. Ready to go. Alright, we're warmed up. I'm using a VFO for the input. We're on 40 meters. 
So I've already got my roller inductor in the area where that should tune up. All right. So we'll start off by going to our grid position. Look at there. Grid current right off the bat. A little bit low. Whatever. Now the only switches that I've cleaned so far is the meter switch and the audio pot because you saw that it was intermittent in my little preamp segment. Okay. Everything else is still crusty dusty. All right. Now this mic does not have push to talk yet. Okay. It does not exist in this radio. So we're simply going to be using that to observe modulation. It may be weak, but I'm hoping that there's at least something there so we know the modulation transformer is okay. All right, so at this point, we're going to go to plate. I'm going to flip around and dip it. Oh, what the heck's that? That's not too good, is it? She pegged right out on me. Maybe I'm just way off base here. Let's turn down our coupling. Oh, yeah. There we go. Thank God. Always make sure, guys, when you're tuning a Viking 2, if you're going to move the coupling, do not do it with the plate voltage applied, all right? You'll arc the switch. You'll screw it up. All right, here we go. I'm going to re-dip now. And we'll take her down to about the 230 milliamps. Now, on the meter, I don't know if I probably covered that up, we're getting a little over 100 watts. What's my grid doing? She's hanging in there, can kind of re-peak it. Peak my oscillator a little more. So the grid's good, good plate, good output. Question is now, do we have any modulation? So here we're in mod position. Now when I fire it up, you should see between 50 to 70 milliamps on the meter. She's right at 50. That's amazing because I just popped that ohmite in there. I took a guess on the tap position. All right, now we're going to take the old microphonium. Let's give it some audio. Got a skeeter flying in my face. Nope, I'm not seeing any activity. Remember, we had like a sweet spot here, but there's no modulation. I expected that because the mod section is stock. It's got the old drippy, crusty caps in it. So the next step will be to repair the modulation section. But the good thing is, I don't see any smoke, guys. All the tubes are glowing. It looks very promising. And we have full output. So I'm pretty surprised that none of the transformers have issues from the moisture that they're exposed to. But that's a good deal. It appears as though the outside case took most of the abuse. So in our next part, to repair of the ugly Johnson Viking, I'm going to totally rebuild the audio section and we're going to retest it. Hopefully then we'll see that meter swing the way it should. But before I go, I got a box in the mail the other day from another ham radio operator. It's supposed to be full of classic Johnson Viking 2 components, a little donation to D-Lab. So why don't we open that up real quick? All right, guys, here we go. The box of Johnson Viking two parts from N5 WHT Volley Reed. He shipped this to me to help out with D Lab's mission. So, in celebration of that, I opened up a new bottle of wine. We got the old Robert Mondavi Cabernet from the case that was donated to me by the guy that I'm actually fixing this Viking for, right? So here we go. I can't wait to see what's in here. It's a very heavy box. It's 20 pounds. Sure don't want to drop that bottle. Here we go. Maybe you should move my glass too. All right. All right, guys. Little bubble ramus. Here we go. Oh, man. I got a creature feature here, dude. T1, very well wrapped and packaged up for a safe trip to D-Lab Electronics. Look at there, high voltage transformer. That's a boat anchor. We got T2. Man, this guy went all out. This is very appreciated, Volley. Very cool view, man. 
you'll see these parts being used on future D-Lab repairs. Got the old modulation transformer. That, guys, is a rare bird and a very expensive piece of iron. Then, we have another box of Reno here. It says knobs, Viking 2, interstage transformer. Just had one of those fried in a past repair. A 20K 50 watt resistoroid and a Viking 2 meter. Let's check it out. Very, very cool. So, guys, you know, if you want to get me something for Christmas, give me some old rusty Johnson Viking 2 parts like this guy did. All right, there's the meter. I don't know if you can see it, but she looks extremely clean. I suppose I should just. Open it up so you can see the face. Oh yeah. So this one actually has, get in here, I don't want to harpoon myself. This one actually has the little Johnson Viking head in it, right? The one on this old ugly Johnson Viking 2 just has the name of the company. So I really like this one. It's very nice. And we've got, that appears to be the interstage transformer there. And we've got here, got a block of styrofoam. I'm sure that there's another transformer. Let's just check it out. Oh no, I was wrong. That's not the interstage. This is, this is for sure. Audio driver. Cool. I like how you labeled it up. Look at there. A 20K 50 watt resistor ray. This is the same one that I just put in that Viking 2. But this one's obviously sealed a little bit better. <laughs> oh, I was doing the wrong flap. Blame that on the wine. Look at there, guys. Brand spanking new with the paper. Oh, might. It's going to go in another Johnson Viking 2. It's Christmas in July at D Lab Electronics. All right, so another great week here at D-Lab Electronics, guys. The new day job at Bet's Machine is going great. I feel as though I am contributing, so I feel worthy now of being there. I come home, I get to work on old ugly Viking 2, and we got to see it put up full power. Yeah, it still needs some more work, but that's to be expected. I open a new bottle of Robert Mondavi out of the case. Ten left right then I get to open up the goodie box from N5 WHT full of Johnson Viking 2 components which help D labs mission to continue I'll so thank you everybody for your continuing support on D labs crazy missions the donations really help to keep my operation going and keep me motivated without the YouTube family there would be no D lab Get ready for part three, where we get Ugly Viking 2 modulating. See you then.